petitions earlier this year, and that qualified for the ballot. Um, the Green Line study that the South Bay, the public scoping meetings were held last month. Uh, Chris has a question or a comment. Um, I, I, I looked at, at your handout. They had a rapid bus evaluation section and said that certain rapid buses were not meeting their criteria. Do you know anything sure, about I'll, that? Sure, I'll get to that in a second. Here. Oh, okay, sorry. I'm just kind of like following through on the agenda, okay. but going through the PowerPoint itself, uh -huh. the fair thing was the first thing. What Metro did was they really, because of the, the charges the bus riders union levied, one of the things was comparing what peer-to-peer -peer transit properties have. The fact is that there was a public hearing back in 2007 where like 1,500 people actually showed up at the building. 200 people were providing testimony. One of the charges the Bus Riders Union constantly says is that Metro is violating uh, Title VI. And so this PowerPoint goes into some of the issues about Title VI and how they reached out to the public for some level of equity. They gave an uh, analysis of the fare change summary, the cash fare history. And one of the interesting points is based upon rate of inflation, that the value of the fare today at uh, $1.25 is the same as if uh, it was it was a uh, 50 cent fare. That's just the uh, question of uh, equivalency. Um, then they compared the fares with the other cities, the financial output of the agency, and then they went into this Title VI uh, fare assessment update to show that um, this would be their court case if they were charge in the Bus Riders Union has gone against them several times on Title VI and it's not been, um, uh, the court has been not accepted the case. Um, moving through after the PowerPoint on Title VI, which is very voluminous here, we've got the update on the regional rail matters, which is some of the high speed and the low sand corridor. Uh, many may know that in high speed rail, Roloff Van Ark is starting as the new CEO next Tuesday. And high-speed rail is going to be changed substantially. Um, they're looking at an at-grade Union Station alternative. At one point, they didn't really figure out that Union Station is a classical design building, an architectural gem, and they wanted to put a second or a third deck on top of Union Station for high-speed rail. We finally brought them down. I did an op-ed like last November, and all these people argued with me. But then the same people finally turned around and brought through. We could do four tracks for high-speed rail, four tracks for Metrolink, and run the run-through tracks, which is a project we've talked about many times. And so they're looking at this joint utility once again, and that's good. Hey, farmers. Um, so moving on, then there's the high-speed rail. Um, let me pass this back to farmers. Give them a chance. Uh, the high-speed rail. There's a timeline here of. You need to record or what? No, no, before you, uh, you said that the downtown connector is going to go to the board, what do you mean by that? Um, the downtown region, somebody's phone's ringing. The downtown regional connector has gone through its alternatives analysis last year or the year before. And this year, it's in an environmental, in fact, we're going to get to the environmental page here. But it's in the preliminary EIR stage, and it's going to go to the board in June. One of the issues with this project has been the, before the community got really involved, the, the Japanese Little Tokyo community has had this series of just horrible things that have been done. Everything from Parker Center taking out part of Little Tokyo to all these lots of injustices in the community. So the community sat down with Metro and they came up with a lot of compromises that wouldn't, have, wouldn't interfere with the temples, it wouldn't interfere with some of the religious establishments in addition to that. And some of the planning would honor the in parts of the community that in the past they would just ignore it and say, well, we'll build anyways. Um, so that's one of the things. So they've gotten through a lot of this, um, these issues. We still have what we call the suggestionists out there. One of my colleagues has found that there's a passenger, an old time passenger terminal the center of downtown called the Subway Terminal Building. The only problem with the subway terminal building is that on one side of the building to the west, it's been cut off because of the basement of some high-rise buildings, and we actually took some engineering analysis of it, and we think that it would cost roughly $500 million to include the old subway terminal building. If the only thing about it is is that rail riders in Los Angeles aren't looking to terminate in the center of downtown. If you're coming from SC side or if you're coming from uh, 
Long Beach side, you want to be able to go at least as far north as Union Station or Chinatown, and then the trains could go out of service in Chinatown Yard. But this one guy is thinking he should get this idea through, and it was rejected in the alternatives analysis. Then another guy that we wrote a response to thought we we this S curve coming out of Union Station, you could just have it go straight across and then come down the tunnel a different way. And that went into providing interference with the temple, with the, there's a Buddhist temple, there's another temple, and it would interfere with a whole bunch of parking structures that were just built and done. And all of a sudden, by the time you um, tinker with all these structures and everything like that, you've added 300 more million dollars to the, to the project. So what did he save by destroying the community now? But the project's coming through, and I don't know if I answered your question. What's the vote on? Pardon? What's the vote? What are they voting on? Oh, just accept the accept uh, the preliminary engineering. Okay. I mean the preliminary uh, environmental impact report. Okay. So back to the high speed rail. There's sort of a, a general time frame here. Now these time frames keep getting kicked back, but with the new CEO of um, high speed rail, it'll be interesting to see how the the ball game has changed. Um, we suspect it will be. Um, secondly, Low Sand, which is the corridor that integrates MetroLink and Amtrak and Coaster has been looking for a project manager. They've been interviewing people and supposedly tomorrow they're gonna to have a, a private meeting at nine in the morning to talk about finalist candidates. Surfliner service is up. Um, and so those candidates are? Well, they're in employment interviews. We'd have no idea. Um, the board has adopted um, a ridership fare increase at Metrolink of 6%. And I should mention that some, some transit agencies yeah. Right. Um, some transit agencies, and John mentioned this, New Jersey Transit, instead of going up 6% a year, what would that be compounded over three years, um, Tom, if it went up 6% a year? Pardon? 20. 20. So instead of giving 6% uh, a year and having a, a total increase for three years of 20%, uh, the New Jersey Transit decided that they skipped in fare increases over three years because some of the advocates were whining and moaning about no increases. All of a sudden they're like a $300 million budget gap and they hit the writers with a 25% fare increase. And then they go back to the cycle again saying no fare increase for three years. I think it's a lot better if you're gonna have a run a business as a business as John said and have a small increase three, six percent every year rather than whacking people with 10, 20 percent like they had to in New Jersey which is 19. Okay, well then that's that's the whole